And I think Congress uniting to send a very clear message and helping the Biden administration match its means and ends is the right and responsible course of action on our foreign policy. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. We'll now have five minute rounds. Uh, Dr. Maroney, I want to start with your assessment as to what Iran's strategies are about in regards to its proxies and whether there has been a shift during the last four months on the Iranian strategies. We saw the loss of U.S. servicemen uh, in regards to the proxy attacks. The U.S. responded and that response has resulted in a significant reduction in the militia's uh, attacks against U.S. interests. My question to you is we see concerns with this tit for tat in, uh, in the uh, northern border of Israel with Hezbollah, but it's prevented the civilian populations from being able to live safely in that region on both sides of the border. How much control does Iran have over the activities of Hezbollah uh, in regards to these attacks that are preventing the civilian populations from being able to live in that region? Yes, they haven't invaded Israel, but it's certainly disruptive to the civilian population. We know that the Houthis in the Red Sea are creating havoc with the commercial shipping. We have a international coalition that is, well, they're, they're, the targets are not Israel, the targets are international. And we have an international coalition that is responding to that. How much is Iran encouraging those types of activities? And has their strategy changed uh, during the last four months? So I would like to get an understanding as to what Iran's game plan is here. Uh, we've been told they don't want to get into direct conflict, but they certainly are, uh, are enabling a significant amount of challenges in the region that could escalate the conflict. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think you've characterized uh, Iran's behavior and its motivations very accurately. Um, ultimately, what the Iranians are looking to do is to try to drive the United States out of the region. That's been their goal since 1979, and it hasn't wavered. But they adapt over time, they look for opportunities, and they often try to test the resolve of the American leadership. And so what we've seen since October 7th is the Iranians stepping up the tempo in hopes of creating more pressure from, the, from within the United States to pull American troops out of those places where they are currently stationed. They have also sought to try to further delegitimize de Israel and to put additional pressure on Israel um, and to create doubt within the Israeli public. They watch very closely the domestic politics and they are seeking to take advantage of that as well. Um, they are, I think, they recognize that they're uh, outmatched by the United States and by Israel, and so that they're very hesitant to get into a direct conflict, but they will push the envelope because that they presume that our willingness to push back is less than theirs, and their, our willingness, willingness to take risks is less than theirs. Um, with respect to Hezbollah and the Houthis, they have very long-standing and organic relationships. They are not uh, puppets of Iran by any stretch of the imagination. They have a st considerable amount of strategic autonomy, but they also have shared interests, and I think that there's nothing that Hezbollah nor the Houthis have done that is uh, in any way opposed to what the Iranians would like them to be doing. It has been successful to date. I think in terms of how to secure the northern border of Israel, the diplomacy that Amos Hochstein is engaged in is the best prospect that we have to try to enforce the UN Security so Council. In regards to that, that's an area of immediate interest because he's trying to get Hezbollah to pull back and to have a safe zone so that the civilian populations can return to the border areas. Uh, how much is Iran influencing those decisions by Hezbollah as to whether to respond to the uh, actions to get them to move off the border, recognizing that Israel at any time could be taking kinetic action on their own. Well, Iran has an interest in trying to preserve Hezbollah as a deterrent against any future Israeli action against Iran's nuclear program. And so I think that's why Hezbollah has been both reluctant to get too far into the fight, as well as at least somewhat open to diplomacy under the current circumstances. 
the pulling Hezbollah back from the border has been a requirement since the 2006 war. They have not respected it. The international community has not enforced it. And if we're able to do so through diplomacy, then we have a better prospect of ensuring that Israel doesn't face the same level of devastating attacks from the north. Thank you. Uh, Sandra Risch. 